<laughs> We're on the night shift again. Who needs sleep anyway? Well, these guys are used not to having sleep. You guessed it, yes, we're at the nurse's hostel. No, we're not, it's a fire station. Do you call it a fire station? Yes. This is Steve. Can you tell us uh, where you get your calls from and how it happens? Yeah, we get the calls direct from uh, Lewis, our control centre for reasons of the What do you just phone him up and you say? No, got a tele printer. Can, can, can you show us? Yeah. We get a, a general alert on the station All and right. then uh, Teleprinter operates similar to it is now. Has a bell rung? Yeah, it's so a, a, a general alert. I said, let's go and have a look at what's yeah. on the printout. It's a general alert. And this tells us what appliances are attending and the address of the incident. Right. We acknowledge it so that our. Is this actually deciding which appliance to send or do you make that decision? No, the, the control centre in Lewis decides what appliances to send. Right, so they've already decided what kind of fire it is or what kind of call it's going to be. Yeah, do you call it a shout like yep. they do on the television? Yeah, face yeah. Like, yep. <laughs> they, they prioritise the calls. Right, right. So is there any, are there any special instructions on this one that will say, uh, you know, cat up tree, dustbin on fire, people involved, or what, yes. what, are the kind of sh what, what are the priorities you're looking for? Well, obviously, in a fire situation, it's persons reported, which deems that uh, when the caller made the call, that there's people actually trapped within inside the building. Right. Or we get a road accident, person's trapped, and then ordinary fire calls, and this particular instance, it's fire alarms ringing on the fourth floor. Right, so what's your next step? You've got to get the guys down out of bed? Or? They're already out of bed. They get oh, right. alert at the same time as everybody right. else. So the moment the bell rang, they thought, oh, here we go. So they don't need to ring that. <laughs> no, <laughs> just that. the officer in charge of the appliances will come here. Right, and what's and this going to do then? Well, this thing, by... Have a look at this, Nick. By pressing the, the, uh, the panel here, we get a root number, which is, on this particular occasion, seven. Yeah. And simply by doing that, it gives us a green wave system. So, you, so all the way through, through the town, all the lights are all yep. changing to green for you because they know you're coming. So, how long have you been a, a fireman? I've been a fireman 14 years now. Goodness me, it's quite a long time, isn't it? Yep. I mean, what time do you retire? How many years do firemen normally do? Um, right about 30. I should be leaving when I'm 52. Do, have you, are you married? No, I'm single. So you don't have to worry about going home to a wife who says, oh, God, have you had a terrible night? What have you oh, been no, doing? Oh, no, 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 I don't have to worry about that. As the bell goes and you're just about to go to a shout, does, it, does something go through you and say, I hope this evening I'm not going to see something really awful? I mean, do you get attuned to that? You never think about it. Do you you know? No, you just, you just go. I think if, you, if you're worried about it, then um, you wouldn't be able to do the job. Absolutely. Uh, I'll just talk to Mark. Mark, okay. show us uh, the uniform and the old bits and pieces on it. Right, OK. If we start at the bottom. These are the uh, fire boots, made of leather, steel toe caps. On top of them we put the leggings to uh, protect the legs. We leave them over the boots for speed of dressing. Right. Next we've got the uh, fire tunic itself, which as you can see is quite heavy. Yeah. And I mean, is, is that a, a decision? You'd imagine that these would be much more of a waterproof kind of plasticky stuff, but that's actually a yeah, real solid the, fabric, isn't it? Yeah, you need the uh, protection from uh, fire as a primary right, thing. Right, right. So the do you actually get soaked to the skin under this on, on oh, bad yeah. nights? Yeah, you can you do. do. <laughs> yeah. And on top of that, finish it all off, is the uh, helmet. Right, and what kind of loads will that take? Is that really... How tough is that? Could you, could you stand on that and not cause any damage? If you... Uh, you can take quite a lot. If you stand upright, that'll take a fair part of the ceiling collapsing on you. Right, and is this back here... What, why has it got such a long back here? Uh, it's to protect you from debris falling down. Right. Where are we going to here? And this is just our uh, missing facilities. It's just our the, the canteen oh, right. and the and the kitchen. So really, not a lot to see. And do you have a nice uh, lady here who cooks the meals like they do in London's Burning? You know, and you yep. have to shout at her. Oh, I'd like a great big plate of uh, sausage and mash, please, Doris. We've got um, between Monday to Friday, um, we've got a civilian cook. But um, for the night shifts and weekends, we cook ourselves. You do it yourself. And is there an argument about that? I mean, all no. the street rotor. <laughs> no, we're fortunate on this particular watch. We've got um, two guys that actually enjoy actually cooking. Actually want to do it. And uh, they create some very And do, you offer, do they offer you a menu, or do you, again, you all just argue? You get a choice, and take it or leave it. Oh, right. <laughs> very good. OK, great stuff. Well, we're now going to go and play a game of snooker. See you next time. Thanks, Steve.